I believe that we could do some work with, with the people here and with the communities represented here in terms of putting structures in place whereby there can be a positive two-way communication. Um, that's really important. It's important for us that we know what's going on in your communities. It's important for you that you have the trust that when you come and tell us that maybe there's an issue that you don't see 24 vans arriving in your estate the next day to, to, to affect the rest, that we can do it in, in a way with a, with a crime prevention motivation and ethos. It's, it's important to us that we, we establish that trust. I know with our community policing units in those areas, there is a lot of good work going on. Um, but I am still sitting here hearing the words crisis and and there is genuine worries and concerns, so maybe more could be done. Um, every district, every station has a community policing unit. And those guards don't take up on the roster in terms of answering calls and going and taking reports of crime. They're out there every day working with people in our communities. And they are available to you to be contacted, um, to be invited to your meetings to they have specific training in terms of being receptive to what the community is telling telling us and then they're probably the most valuable guards in the station for bringing back information to the station which helps us i suppose plan how we're going to police our areas um, also in every district we have what we call guard diversity officers officers and their guards in my own office um, are involved with training and they would be specifically trained um, in terms of the needs of our diverse communities and the sensitivities that, that go along with it. So there are avenues for which you can communicate with the guards other than maybe ringing and having a patrol car arrive at your door. And I suppose there that's something that, that could be utilised. Um, we have members of the Guardi of the rank of inspector that are, are, are given tasks with championing diverse issues. And what I would like to see is maybe that we bring in those inspectors and make sure that there are systems in place for them to communicate, two-way communication between the representatives of your community and those inspectors. Um, and that that could be done on a regular basis so that we, maybe the two-way communication can, can, go, can go on and that perhaps we can be more um, aware of the concerns and issues, issues that you have. Um, again, I don't want to try and tell you what you should be thinking or what should you be feeling. But I know prior to say my time in the diversity office, um, you would see things on social media, maybe clips that go viral. And if it involves young black kids, the perception is that it's somehow more sinister than if it involves two groups of kids from two rival Gaelic football teams. You know, it's important that we don't fall into the trap um, of, of pushing pushing things to a level that maybe maybe they're not at, and that's not to dismiss any of the concerns that you have. But it's important that the perception matches reality, and that that we we know we look at the facts and we look at the figures um, as as much as anything else. If if we as Gardaí start to overcook things and decide that maybe this particular area needs more police attention, then there's a risk that that serves to marginalise the young people in those areas. So it's a delicate balance, but it's, I suppose that challenge is overcome through communicating with each other, through working with each other. Um, the internet and social media, I think, has pushed, put groups of kids from geographical areas in touch with each other in ways that never happened when we were kids. My 12-year-old boy plays football, and he said to me recently, you know the guy that plays centre-back for St. Francis? And I said, no. And he goes, he's after signing for Cherry Orchard. He says, how do you know that? He told me. He says, who am I speaking to? He was on social media. So the problem with the kids then is they get a kick on a football pitch, and they go home and they start communicating with each other. Whereas when I was a boy, you got a kick on the football pitch, you might have wanted to duke it out with that guy, but you wouldn't see him for another six months, so it was fine. So there are the sort of challenges that maybe we didn't experience or live as kids ourselves, but that our kids are now dealing with. 
and you can be all talk online when you're not looking at people but then when the kids go to a concert or go to a and, and these groups come together then that animosity has built up in ways that it, it wouldn't have previously and that's one of the challenges i see as well how do we how do we manage that situation i know there was a concert in the city center a number of months ago and there was criticism thrown at the guardy for over policing it but the reality was they knew those groups from different areas coming and they feared that it would kick off and they they flooded it with guards so that it wouldn't kick off but then if the perception from those kids is that we're, we're over policing again it's a fine balance and it's, it's a challenging situation for us but it's it's inspiring to see people from the community come together to try and work on these issues and if all i leave you with today is that we're open for communication and we're open to work with you working with you in order to to solve these problems then then that'll be a good night to work from my perspective okay thank you Thank you very much, Sajan Dermot. Um, I'm sure we'll, we would have questions 